Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. 
for I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were blaspheming against God and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the inequity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, here I am. Eli said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great 
A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Corinth. Just because something is technically legal doesn't mean that it's spiritually appropriate. If I went around doing whatever I thought I could get by with, I'd be a slave to my whims. You know the old saying, first you eat to live, and then you live to eat? Well, it may be true that the body is only a temporary thing, but that's no excuse for stuffing your body with food or indulging it with sex. Since the master honors you with a body, honor God with your body. God honored the master's body by raising it from the grave. He'll treat yours with the same resurrection power. Until that time, remember that your bodies are created with the same dignity as the master's body. You wouldn't take the master's body off to a whorehouse, would you? I should hope not. There's more to sex than mere skin on skin. Sex is as much spiritual mystery as physical fact. As written in scripture, the two become one. Since we want to become spiritually one with the master, we must not pursue the kind of sex that avoids commitment and intimacy, leaving us more lonely than ever, the kind of sex that can never become one. There is a sense in which sexual sins are different from all others. In sexual sin, we violate the sacredness of our own bodies, these bodies that were made for God-given and God-modeled love, for becoming one with another. You realize, don't you, that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit. Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through your body. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Peter and said to him, follow me. Now Pete, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the, the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. The events of these last couple of weeks happening in this season of Epiphany present people of faith with a distinct purpose. For weeks now, the questions being asked are, what shall we say? What is our responsibility? What can we do? Thankfully, our steady seasons of the church year are here to remind us in the beauty and darkness of every winter, we are called to remember light. 
to bear light, regardless of how exhausted we become or helpless we feel. In this morning's great story of the call of Samuel, we see that Eli is old, exhausted, lying down in his room and his eyesight has begun to grow so dim that he could no longer see. And yet the writer of the story tells us that even in him, the lamp of God had not yet gone out. He was still able to recognize when God was summoning those who had ears to listen, to listen, get up, to go and to know that God will be with you. In the gospel, when the disciples are being drawn to the words and works of Jesus, who was yet to perform his first miracle, we see them sharing the light, telling others to go, to listen, to see for themselves the wonders of God. And even in Paul's letter to the Corinthians, we are reminded that our very bodies are here, not just for the indwelling of God's light, but so that our bodies can proclaim God's goodness. Contrary to popular belief, Paul sees the body as very good. It is only when our bodies are misused that they are dangerous and destructive to individuals, to families, and to the kingdom of God. When we choose private pleasure or preference over the wellness of the community. Paul reminds us that love and mercy need physical expression. Without it, love becomes invisible and mercy and justice purely sentimental. Eugene Peterson wrote, we won't learn to be more spiritual by becoming less physical. The body with its appetites and its pleasures is what God has chosen to make God's great love real among us in the body of Jesus. And it is in these bodies that we are called to act, to serve, and to stillness, to listen. John Danforth, retired senator and Episcopal priest, reminds us in his book, The Re Relevance of Religion, that the Old Testament leaders drew their people to God listened to the prophets, and spoke the truth to kings. He went on to say, the activist understanding of religion, this understanding, carried into the New Testament. Jesus repeatedly told his disciples that faith was more than a private matter. They were expected to do things, to invest their talents, to bear fruit, to go into the world and make disciples. Nowhere does the Bible suggest that the responsibility of religion is to stay out of people's hair. He encourages faithful people to get involved in healing the system of our democracy from the inside out. Our republic is a beautiful thing. He said, if we think America's light today is not as bright as it should be, it is our responsibility to turn up that light. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whom we will honor tomorrow, while a gifted writer and deeply spiritual man, organized bodies. He marched, he prayed, he preached. He told us, come, look, listen. What are you going to do? He taught by example that the roots of social and civic engagement first require listening. Then you act. In 1956, during the Montgomery bus boycott, he received yet another threatening phone call. This one late at night. He couldn't sleep. He was at a breaking point of exhaustion and about to give up. He tells what happened in his book, Stride Toward Freedom. I was ready to give up, he writes, with my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me. I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. In this state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, I decided to take my problem to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed. 
The words I spoke that midnight are still vivid in my memory. God, I am here, taking a stand for what I believe is right, but now I am afraid. The people are looking to me for leadership, and if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I am at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. At that moment, he wrote, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never experienced God before. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be at your side forever. Almost at once, my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. This beautiful man in the middle of this profound movement, feeling exhausted and alone, though the lamp of God still burned in him, stopped. He prayed. He listened. It is my hope that we can be as faithful we have many long and dark days ahead, and the lamp of God is nowhere near going out. Listen, God is summoning all of us who have ears to listen. Use your bodies to spread the good news and the great hope of God's great love of peace. Write letters, make phone calls, pray, care for others, for love for pleasure, for mercy, for justice. Benedict, a sixth century monk, once said, listen, my child, with the ear of your heart. What is God calling you to do? Who is God calling you to be in these times? You are enough. You are more than enough, and you are not alone. The Reverend Dr. King said, I have held many things in my hands and I have lost them all. But whatever I have placed in God's hands, that I still possess. In honor of him and of those words, let's pray. God, our lives are in your hands and for that we give you thanks, amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and, was, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form three, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer and in your service leaflet. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Australia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Christ Episcopal Church, Lexington, Missouri, and the Ecumenical Relations Commission. For this parish, we ask that you look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Martin, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and laity. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, the president, for Joe, the president-elect, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those working to protect us during this pandemic, and on Esben, Carol, and Bruce, Karen, Michael, Ben, Gwen, Petrina, and Renee, on Jordan and Ashley, on Steve, on Ryan and his family, on Jean, Joe, Eileen, Liesel, Alan, Anne, Tim, and Cindy, on Anna, and all those who reach out to St. Paul's for prayers, and on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the victims of the current pandemic, to George, Brianna, and Ahmad, and all those departed, eternal rest. Let light light perpetual perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. kingdom. We give you thanks for this whole parish and for this family gathered online this morning. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially our food ministries, the people of South Sudan, for Holy Cross School Haiti, St. Paul's Day School, Gordon Park School, and Citizens of the World Academy. We invite your thanksgivings, intercessions, and petitions silently or aloud. Good thanks for Emma and for Lindsay. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning. Peace, everybody. I know you are saying peace to each other in the comments here or here. I can't remember where they are. Um, I am Heidi Carter, your associate for ministry here at St. Paul's, along with Father McKee and the lovely and talented Sam Anderson, our music director and all things tech. Welcome to St. Paul's. If you're a visitor this morning, please take a moment to say hello in the comment section so we can greet you. If you'd like to know more about what's going on at St. Paul's, please check out our website um, where you can subscribe to our weekly epistle. There is coffee hour after church this morning. Information about that is also right there. Um, I think Mary Jensen Bond is our host today, so stop in and say hello. We promise to wrap it up in time for you to get back on your knees for prayer for the Chiefs game. Um, so join us there. We'd be happy to see you. Pledges are coming in. We're excited about that. We hope you all have a beautiful weekend, and we will see you next Sunday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, 
in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you seem to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error and the truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with St. Paul and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you're welcome to receive communion at God's altar here at St. Paul, Paul's Church this morning.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.